First of all, let's start with searching some reference images. So I searched for old barrel on Google, Pinterest, ArtStation and pasted it on a free software called PureF. Link is in the description. This video is sponsored by Wingfox but more of this soon in the video. And you will get the project file link is in the description. So let's start by adding in a cube and this will be our barrel stave. So for the dimensions it is 90 cm on the z axis, 30 cm on the y axis and 2 cm on the x axis. Now you can just take a cylinder object and apply a wooden texture to it but it will look way sharper if you create each stave separately. So in edit mode add 3 loop cuts to the stave and turn on proportional editing and set the type from smooth to sphere and it will give us a perfect arched curve and then use the scroll wheel to adjust the fall off and move it on the x axis. Now move it slightly away from the center and right click and choose origin to 3d cursor. Now add in an empty object and an array modifier to the stave and set the object offset to the empty. In the relative to offset set everything to 0 and increase the number to your liking and rotate the empty and decrease the number if they are intersecting each other. So for me a number of 16 work fine. Now add in a mesh circle which will be our cap. So in edit mode press A to select all and press F to fill the faces. Now select two vertices which are facing in front of each other and then press J to connect vertex path. And let's do the same for some vertices. Then add a bevel to the edges and extrude them inside and duplicate the same at the bottom. Let's add a bevel modifier to the wooden staves as they are looking very super sharp. Now add in a circle again and this time it will be the steel rings around the stave which keeps them together. So in edit mode just extrude it on the z axis and scale it according to the size of the barrel. Now in the reference photos as you can see. The rings are overlapping each other and they are joined by some rivets. So delete a face and then extrude it again so that it overlaps other faces. Then add in a solidifier modifier and a subsurf modifier. Now for the rivets add in a circle again. I promise this is the last time. Then by extruding the edges create the overall shape and then press F to fill the face. Then bevel the face and then extrude the center face inside. Now here is a nice way to place every rivet on place very fast. So duplicate the existing rivet and then shift right click on the position of the rivet. And then select the rivet and then right click and select cursor to selection. If the rotation is messed up just rotate it on the z axis. And now I will quickly do that for every rivet and then select all the rivets and press ctrl j to make them one single object. I have seen this cool button cap on wine barrels. Uh, I loved it so much that I made for this one also. Now let's duplicate the whole barrel and let's move it to a new collection called low poly. Uh, this we will need later so hide it for now. Now we can move on to sculpting but before that we need uniform topology. Or it will sculpt smooth on some areas and jagged on some areas. So I added some uniform loop cuts across all the wooden staves. Now add in a multi resolution modifier and subdivide it according to your system. Multi resolution is way more performant than subdivision surface. For now I have kept the sculpting subdivision to 5 but I might increase it later. So I have downloaded some brushes from Blendswap. Uh, you will get the link of them in the description. So if you want to append the brushes, so go to append and then select the blend file you have just downloaded and select all the brushes named orb and hit append. And if you want to use the tree bark brushes, then create a new brush. Uh, it will be image or movie by default, then open the image and then use the texture. And then in the texture, use the new brush you have just created and set the stroke to anchored and set the texture to view plane. I have turned on y axis symmetry to save me some time. So I started with the scrape brush and scraped the top of the stave to make it look more natural. Then with the clay strip brush uh, set to negative I added some detail of large chipping of wood. 
After that I made the cracks and gaps between the woods to make it look old and damaged with the or small line brush. Then with the rock brush I added some subtle details to the stave and the wood was coming to life. Then finally with the clay strip brush I made some vertical details and smoothened them out to finish the wood. I recommend using a paint tablet here while sculpting. It is not 100% needed but uh, I cannot sculpt without a paint tablet. So I think it is way more important. Then with the bark brush I added some random details which I smooth out later. Then for the steel rings I added a multi resolution modifier of 4 subdivision. And don't forget the uniform topology. And added subtle details with the rock brush. Then to add damage and cracks I used the orb slash curve brush uh, which is super cool to use. You can create almost any type of crack. And this is my favorite of all these. Then with the orb hammer brush I made subtle hammer details on the rings and now same for everything. Then for the upper cap I added a multi resolution modifier of 6 subdivisions and used a clay strip brush to create wooden details and it really sells the effect. Then with my favorite slash brush I, I added many slashes uh, which made it look like a stylized wood. Then for the button cap, I used the clay strip brush and noise brush to add some subtle details. Uh, didn't made much of a difference. But your skills can make much of a difference if you take a professional course from Wingfox. On Wingfox, you can find many courses that can help you learn. Uh, Wingfox is a great place to learn professional skills and they have professional instructors and lecturers from around the world. They are not only our sponsors, but I am their user too. Uh, Wingfox provides courses related to CG and VFX, Game Art, IT, Graphic Design, Animation, Concept Design and Environment Design. You can also filter courses by your level that is beginner, intermediate or expert and by language and by price. You can find many blender courses here from professional artists. The one I like here is this customized AAA weapon creation in blender. This course is by Kid Grand and he will teach you on how to make AAA quality weapons for games. This course will cover professional workflow for hard surface modeling, sculpting, UVs and even baking, texturing in Substance Painter and presentation and rendering. Link of the course in the video description. So hope you are excited so get ready to learn with Wingfox. Then it was time for transferring the details of our high poly barrel to our low poly barrel. And for that you need to watch this video in which you will know everything about transferring details. So you can transfer your details in either Substance Painter or Blender. So I made all separate cage objects and moved them to the cage collection. Uh, I can also transfer details in Blenders but I think Substance Painter is best for this purpose. So I exported each cage object separately and our low poly barrel and high poly barrel. And if you don't understand anything what I am doing here then definitely watch the video. I will be doing texturing in Substance Painter which is uh, way simpler and advanced than Blender. And if you want to invest some money in something then I think for me it's definitely Substance Painter. So after baking all the mesh maps you can see our low poly barrel is looking just like our high poly barrel with such a low poly count. <laughs> That's a huge performance optimization. Uh, this exact workflow is also used for game assets. So for the texturing, I used just a simple wood material for these staves, which I found on Ambient CG. Uh, same for the upper cap and lower cap. Then a simple iron material to the rivets and steel rings and a dark iron material on the button cap. Then I stamp a normal detail on the cap and this is where Substance Painter beats Blender. Then I added some dirt and rust to the caps and rivets and steel rings. Now you can see the instant amount of detail Substance Painter can give you. Then some dirt on the barrel staves and upper cap. Then some rust weather effect on the wood 
which makes it look like the rust has dripped on the wood. Then I export back everything to Blender again. Then I started creating the scene with a plane and plank material which I edited a bit in edit mode and some wooden boards on the back and few variety of grass uh, from the botanic add-on and shadow of the tree making it look more alive. So that's it guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you want to make stunning landscapes then you can watch this video bye bye.